Right. <coughs> um, now, before I do anything, I suppose I better go and get up and put the light on. So, <coughs> there's something for you to look forward to here. It's a, it's a bright sunny day, but it's slightly dark in here, so I've got to get up and put the light on. So, um, for all my fans of me getting up to put the light on or off, I know you look forward to seeing it. There we go. <laughs> I'm joking, obviously. I've taken the thing off the cat ears, so um, there we are, there's my cat ears. Oh, the bed's got hair. So, um, yeah, not feeling the whole... Oh, let me turn this down, I'm sorry. Not feeling the whole Halloween vibe this year, I'm just not feeling it at all. Now, the reason I'm doing this little in supplementary video is because I've unpacked a couple of shoppy dolls, the only two shoppies I ever have unpacked. Now, my latest acquisition, as you know, is Coralie, and I forgot to read the... I'll tell you what, I'll put Colette here while I read what it says. Good day, Shopkins fans. It's Coralie all the way from the land down under. Grab your swimsuit and join me and my Shopkins mates, Shelley, Pearl and Sunny Glasses, as we relax on the beach and explore some reefs. From cuddly koalas and cute kangaroos, there are so many new Aussie friends to meet during your stay in Australia. Australia. See ya, Coralie. And um, I took her out because I was so disgruntled at seeing her coral. Well, I won't take her out. I don't but her corals were upwards, and they didn't look as nice as the one they had in Sainsbury's because I got this one from the entertainer. So I took her out just to put her coral flat so she looks okay now. Now, the other one I unboxed was Daisy Petals. This one I had to get from Australia, from eBay, using my friend's address and whatever, because um, I was promised that the entertainer would have her in July, but they never did. They've only just got her in recently, in the middle of October, long after I'd thought, well, I'm, if I don't get her now, I won't get her. And I'm just never happy with the way her headband looks it's like a, in the entertainer the ones they've got in there her headband's on properly on her head it looks like it's fitted properly on her head but this one just yeah you know and I've had I've had to keep taking it off and then attaching her twirling her hair around this so I might get another if they've still got them which I don't see why they shouldn't have I might um when I get there again, that is, to the entertainer. I might get another uh, one and keep this one out. So, you know, I can just have one out then. And, um, they've got the brush. I don't think she has a brush, but I don't see that it would be easy to use these brushes on, especially when her hair's like this, in the curls. So I'm going to try and get this. I like the Shopkins. Pretty colour. I'm hoping you, I've got white screen, so I don't know if you're seeing any of this, but I hope you are. But yeah, you wouldn't want to brush her hair because it would make it frizzy. I suppose you know, if you try to brush curls, it just makes it all fuzzy and frizzy and massive, and all the curls go. So I'm, um, but so yeah, I'm not happy about this headband. It doesn't look how it's meant to, so I might put her on her stand and keep her out and get the other one so I can keep one in her box. I'm not one of those obsessive collectors. You know, they say you're not a real proper collector if you take them out of the box. You're supposed to keep them in their boxes. Well, I don't agree with that. I think that only applies if you're the sort of collector that's only buying things, not because you're really interested in them, but because you see it as an investment. And you think, well, if I keep them long enough, there come a time when I'll be able to sell them for a lot of money, or I'll be able to make money by selling them as the, selling them off as they get scarce, because people who want to buy them, and 
to me, that's that's just some, that's an investor, not a collector. I'm a collector, so I do want to take them out of their packaging eventually, but um, I just haven't got the space at the moment to, to put them. I mean, look, I've got a lot of dolls here. Can you just see? Can you see? And they're all just piled up, leaning against each other, which is probably not good. And the problem of naming the doll dollies. As I, I think I said in my in my haul video I just uploaded la yesterday last night. I was I said I was going to call this one Honey, and she oh she smells lovely too. I was going to call her Honey because I thought she looks very sweet and spring like. And then so I looked up online to see if anyone had said anything about the name, and they were saying oh it reminds me of Dipsy Honey from EastEnders, and I thought oh no I yeah I can remember that character. I thought no no, so I decided I thought of April because she looks floral. Then I thought of Flora. I thought I might call her Flora. And I thought, hang on, it's like the margarine. And which I don't know why they had to go and name margarine after a girl's name. It's a bit silly. D didn't they give a thought to all the people whose name is actually Flora and then going to have to put up with the stupid taunts from h nasty little kids at school? D Anyhow, don't, let's focus on negativity. So I decided against Flora. And, um, and then I thought, what about Blossom? What about Petal? And I thought it was a bit twee. So then I thought Candice. I thought, yes, I'll call her Candice. But then I thought, hang on, wasn't there a silly character in Coronation Street called that? And then I thought, so I'm calling her, wait for it, drum roll. I'm calling her Lilith. And those who are in the know would be saying, oh no, why? Well, I thought I'll call her Lilith. Because as you probably realise, if you do know, Lilith was meant to be Adam's first wife. And she was apparently thrown out of the Garden of Eden, or she refused to go back into it because she refused to be subservient to Adam. Because she was created equal with Adam. And um, and then Eve was created from Adam's rib. So, you know, you know I know it's a story. If, if you believe in it 100%, well, you know, OK, I'm not criticising. But... I suppose it's a sort of allegory and um, I'm not going to get into the whole religion thing. I mean, I, yes, I, I used to go, you know, I had religion when I was a, a kid, like, and um, I'm not saying, I'm, I don't believe in anything, but once you get into science and stuff and, I mean, there's a lot of, things about religion that I do like but you don't have to be religious to be a good person if you care about the planet God's earth if you like to call it if you care about the environment you try to protect little creatures you try not to do anything to damage it I don't fly up in the sky in planes I don't drive a vehicle I don't smoke I recycle everything. I don't throw loads of. I don't throw plastic bags into the. I don't throw rubbish on the beach. I go and pick other people's rubbish up off the beach. So I'm a pretty good person, even though I don't follow any organised religion. But anyhow, so she's Lilith because I thought that's a very strong character. Some people say she was a female demon, but I don't know about that. But. They probably would say that about any strong woman who had a mind of her own from the old patriarchal days of old, and even today. Sometimes I'm, I'm not. I'm not a feminist. I'm not some rabid, staunch feminist, but I believe in fairness, and I don't like unfairness. And I think people should not be judged according to what sex they are, what age they are, what race, nationality, religion they choose to follow, or whatever. That people, as long as they're not hurting other people, not interfering with anybody. I mean, I have a problem with drunks because they do cause a problem for other people. And drug addicts cause a problem for other people by the way they treat other people. You might say, well, they can't help it. But... No one had a more deprived childhood than I did when I was growing up. And, you know, I've had someone say to me once, well, if your childhood was that bad, you'd had to have turned to drink and drugs. I couldn't afford to turn to drink and drugs. I didn't have enough money for that. So, um, and I chose not to. I chose to, how I coped, I don't know. And I don't know how I cope now. I think I battled depression and anxiety and severe as well I mean when people have mental health problems you will know what I'm talking about people say to me oh, because you're so strong you say I'm not strong 
most of it is based on fear. I'm, I don't trust the medical profession and all their drugs, and I'm going off on a complete tangent. I didn't mean to. I read what doctors don't tell you. <laughs> Anyhow, so she's Lilith. I thought I ought to explain. I don't know why I felt the need to explain myself. Lack of confidence, probably. Never explain. Her name's Lilith. End of story, full stop. Don't question me why. Her name's Lilith. That's the attitude I should have adopted, but it isn't. So I like to explain things to people. And yeah, look at Daisy Petals. Not very happy with them. Um, with this wretched headband. So this is just a supplementary little add-on video to the haul because I've unboxed her. Let's look at these sweet little Shopkins. That's a little day, isn't that sweet? And that little one, that's, uh, that's so cute. Let's see what it says. Does it tell you the Shopkins? I read all this before in my original video. She's just dropped it. Lilith's dropped her bag. The perfect pick. A down-to-earth girl, Daisy Petals, understands the power of flowers and is always showering other shoppies with blooming, wonderful gifts. Picking a bunch of her best friends and playing in the garden is what Daisy Petals loves to do. Favourite hobby, making daisy chains. A shame she can't make one that stays on her head. Shopkins BFF, Whitney watering can and Maisie Daisy. That's what I wanted to know. Favourite place to shop, the Pretty Boutique. Boutique. The Pretty Bouquet Boutique. So, okay, so there's the watering can. As you can see, the watering can shoppy. And there's Maisie Daisy, the flower pot one. Well, I need titchy little fingers for these, and there she goes down. Oh, she could probably hold her. Lilith. I said, I don't want that. So I'm floral enough. So yeah, look, I mean, look at that. Honestly, this is not, not good, is it? This isn't good. What a mess. So, uh, you know, these are sub shoppy dolls. They're not that substantial, really. They seem very lightweight and flimsy. And, um, you know, they're, they're meant to, they're sold as toys aren't they primarily there's children's toys for children to play with and kids are often rough with their toys and I don't know that they would stand up to a lot of rough treatment you'd hope they would but I mean they're not just sold for collectors to just keep in their boxes I mean, as I said you know to, to me pe people often say oh well, you're not a real collector then if you take them out that's rubbish Collectors who keep the things in the boxes are investors rather than collectors. I Oh, I'm not going to judge. Maybe some just like to see them in their boxes. But that's the, the general idea of collecting something and then not taking it out of its box and keeping it in there is because you're buying it as an investment. And then you think, well, I can sell it mint, in mint condition, because um, it's never taken out of its box. Brand new in box, in mint condition, because they know they can get more money for that. So to me, that's not a collector, a proper collector who's enthusiastic about the item they're collecting. That's just someone who sees it as a way of making money, and there's nothing wrong, nothing wrong with that if that's what you're... I mean, I want to make money, but I don't want to sell my things that I collect. I collect them because I like to, to know that I have them. I can look at them, and they make me feel happy in the fact that I've got them. They don't make me happy as such, because only yourself in, in your own mind, nothing outside of yourself can make you happy. Um, your circumstances can make you unhappy, and mine do, but I try to make myself happy by... Anyway, I don't want to go off on all this, these ridiculous tangents. Dwelling on self-pity and being negative. 
I just wondered if um, you're seeing a, a better colour representation of her in the, just the ordinary daylight coming in. I think it's light enough in here for that. It's just that I've had so, so much disapproval from people for the fact that I like to collect these little things. Plus, I'm not doing any harm to anyone. I, I'm not going out spending like a hundred pound on a meal in a restaurant in, in the evening and, and getting drunk. I don't do any of that. Whereas, you know, I'm just, I just like to collect things and I have people criticising and moaning about it and giving me grief over it and making me feel miserable. So I can't, instead of being able to enjoy it, there's anxiety associated with it because of all the disapproval and unpleasantness and comments I get and disapproval from people and not interfering with anyone. It's, I don't know. Can't they just leave people alone? Nothing to do with other people. I mean, my friend, all right, he moans because it affects him because I have to have a lot of it sent to his house and he gets fed up with it and a lot of it's there. And um, so, yeah, it, it is affecting him in that respect. But then I have to put up with a lot from him. I take his miserable moods and him moaning and taking his temper out on me about anything that upsets him. I mean, don't mean physically, but I mean, you know, he's not the most pleasant person in the world to deal with. I've got a nice friend in London, um, and other people I know, but um, I'm talking about the main person, but I've had other people, you know, come here and, oh, you need to get rid of a oh, you need, oh, you need a skip to get, uh, I think I'll oh, go away, and then I just, puts me off that person, and I don't feel I want to see him anymore, like, as friends, you know, it puts me off, so I don't invite a lot of people here, because I get all this nonsense, and, um, if you if you haven't if you can't talk about what you saw on television the night before, they think you're not oh you're not normal because you know everybody just sits and as someone said to me once, all you need is as long as you've got a s sofa to sit on. I mean I presume they mean a settee. As long as you've got that to sit on and the television in front of, as long as you've got a TV in front of you, you don't need anything else. Why would you need anything else? Oh my God! Because you go past these homes, you see the white walls. But nothing there apart from a few kids' pictures and the big widescreen TV in the room and, and, they, and they sat there laying around watching it. And that's, you know, people say, how dare you criticise? That's like, well, they criticise me. The people that do that feel, well, they can, they've got the right. They can criticise me because I don't do what they do. But I daren't criticise them because I've got no right to do that. But they have got the right to criticise me. That's the way of the world. That's how it is because they're the majority. Well, sod that, I've got the right as well. Making my oh, head sorry, hot and hurt and um, making me irritable. But I'm um, yeah. Ridiculous. Can you see Batty out there? He comes out once a year. Can you see him? <laughs> Can you see Batty? <laughs> Hi. Oh, I'm doing a balancing act here. Hi, Batty. Oh, my fur's blowing. Oh, cuteness. Oh, Batty. <laughs> This thing's got a mind of its own, I'm telling you it has.